In many conflict-affected countries around the world, people are directly dependent upon natural resources for their well-being. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, commonly known as the DRC, has an abundance of land, water, and forest resources. A half of Africa's water runs through the DRC, with a huge potential to be a source for hydropower. Groundwater and springs also provide important sources of drinking water to millions of Congolese people. The DRC has 1.55 million square kilometers of forest. The Congolese people depend on these vast forest resources for fuel, charcoal, and food. The biodiversity inside the country is unparalleled on the planet. It's home to the famous silverback gorillas. Yet, because of prolonged conflict, natural resources are being used unsustainably, undermining the livelihoods of many Congolese. For the past 20 years, the DRC has been ravaged by conflict. Two civil wars and armed rebel groups and militias have thrown the country into a state of economic mismanagement and political unrest. Natural resources are widely acknowledged to have played a key role in the DRC's complex cycle of conflict. The armed groups involved in the conflict abuse the country's natural resources to fund their causes. The conflicts have in turn created situations whereby the sustainable use of natural resources is frequently a matter of survival for local people. Congolese have had little choice but to pursue survival strategies based largely on harvesting natural resources. The long period of crisis has transformed foraging livelihood strategies for the majority of the population. The main environmental challenges seen in, in post-conflict states is institutional impact. What typically happens is a kind of complete breakdown in government, in management of resources. And so you have a kind of a free-for-all often where you can see very fast deforestation, use of resources, overfishing and so on, as, as people try and um, find any, any way they can to, um, to, to feed their families and survive in a time of crisis. These conflicts not only negatively impact natural resources, but also weaken government institutions and country infrastructure. Water and irrigation systems are destroyed and fall into disarray as a result of years of conflict. Currently, only 26% of the country has access to clean water. The continuous conflict has limited the government's institutional capacity to manage its natural resources within the country. This has also led to a complete lack of regulation of fishing, so local populations are overfishing limited supply. Because of conflict, resources are scarce and typically used unsustainably because of weak government structures. Then, because of the lack of resources available, conflicts start again over the use of resources. One way to break this cycle is proper management of resources and stronger government institutions and capacity. Many post-conflict governments invite the United Nations Environmental Programme to carry out environmental assessments that provide recommendations for improving natural resource management as part of larger post-conflict peacebuilding efforts. Environment, natural resources tends to get forgotten. It tends to be seen as something that can be dealt with later, um, that is not an immediate priority. Um, whereas the, the UN Environment Programme would argue that this is something that we really need to think about early on. Um, the international community needs to focus on. Because natural resources are so important to livelihoods in, in fragile states and also to recovery of fragile states. There are many countries who have experienced devastating conflicts, especially in the developing world. Oftentimes, these conflicts create lasting environmental problems, which affect local peoples. Because so many people's livelihoods depend on the natural resources around them, a sustainable relationship must be created after conflict. UNEP tries to tackle these problems by performing post-conflict environmental assessments. Although this is not the only step to solve post-conflict problems, it is a critical step and important issue that must be addressed. The DRC government invited UNEP to conduct an environmental assessment to start the first step in natural resource management and recovery in the country. The government draws from recommendations of the assessment to create programs and policies to break the cycle of conflict, 
destruction and unsustainable use of resources. These programs will benefit the environment, local population, and economic recovery in the DRC.